Welcome to Cambridge House Live. I'm Vanessa Collette at the World Resource Investment Conference. Joining me today is Jeff Berwick of the Dollar Vigilante. Welcome, Jeff. Great to have you here with us. Thank you, Vanessa. Jeff, you're an anarchist. Most people believe anarchy is a bad thing. Why have you embraced it? Well, first of all, their belief is wrong. Uh, the, uh, the government uh, really wants to destroy that word or make it seem scary because without, if everyone believed in anarchy, there would be no government. And so uh, for the last hundred years or so, anytime someone breaks a window or a bomb goes off, they say it's anarchists. Uh, but uh, true anarchy really just means that uh, no ruler, it's actually a Greek word, uh, an is uh, without and archy is ruler. And it just means you don't want to be ruled by anyone. You don't want a king or a president to rule you and tell you what to do. And if you take that to its logical extent, that basically means that you do, you do not want to actually uh, initiate violence or you don't want anyone to initiate violence against you. And of course the government is based on violence. As Mao said, uh, uh, democracy comes out of a barrel of a gun. Uh, without, if the government wasn't using violence and theft, they wouldn't be government, they'd be a regular business. Uh, so anarchy is a beautiful philosophy. Uh, it's really starting to catch on now. People are starting to understand that it's a, it's a beautiful thing and it's not a dangerous thing or a bad thing. Uh, some people are scared because we've had governments our whole lives. Everyone everywhere in the world has had them. So people can't imagine what a world would be like without them. But uh, I can tell you it would be much, much better and more, more peaceful and more prosperous. So it sounds like it's a self-governing philosophy. When you say there would be no ruler, does it also mean there would be no rules? No, that's, uh, that's a question that's often asked. Uh, no, of course, uh, you can have private law. Uh, you can have as many laws as you want as long as they're agreed upon by people in contracts. Uh, you can have all kinds of uh, uh, ways to do things. You can have private policing uh, in Detroit right now. Because of the, um, the financial problems going on in Detroit and the U.S., uh, most of the police never show up to anything anymore. And uh, a number of private uh, police companies have started up, and they're doing a phenomenal job. And, of course, they're not going to, like, stop you and beat you up or pepper spray you if you don't stop at a stop sign or you go 10 miles an hour over some arbitrary speed limit. Uh, this is what, uh, uh, because the government has a monopoly on things like policing, just like any monopoly, it becomes just worse and worse and uh, they don't actually offer good service and they have no incentive to offer good service and they don't even know if they're offering a good service because they don't actually have a profit. That's how companies can tell if they're doing something that people want or not. If they're making a profit, they're doing something people want. If they're not, they're not. And government doesn't know that, they have a monopoly and it just gets worse and worse and it happens like today with the police that we have today. But with private security, it'd be beautiful. I just came from uh, Chile and uh, all the firefighters there are all vol voluntary. And uh, so I was on the street and I was asking a friend, I said, why are those firefighters out asking for money? And he said, they're all voluntary here. And uh, many of them are taxi drivers. And uh, you can actually see if you get in the taxi, they'll have their little volunteer firefighter sticker. And if there's a fire somewhere and it's in their area, they'll get a call and they'll go straight to the fire. Uh, these things can all work. You can hire private agencies. They'll always do a better job than the government. Do you always think that having more regulation impedes economic growth? Because if you look at Singapore, um, you know, the case can be made that um, although they increase the regulation um, and really a lot of very strict regulation, but the economy is, is setting a standard for the world. Yeah, well, I definitely agree regulation is horrible. Regulation really destroys economies, and there's no need for it. Nothing needs to be regulated. A, a, a capitalist company uh, can regulate itself just fine. Airlines have the biggest interest in making sure their planes don't crash than anyone else. If, if Air Canada crashes every week, Air Canada is not going to be around very much longer. But the government comes in and says, oh, we need to regulate it, and we need to make sure they're doing everything correctly. Companies do that already. Uh, there's no need for it at all. And you brought up Singapore. There is some regulation, but there's a lot of economic freedom there and not a lot of economic regulation. And they're booming like crazy. Um, I just started a uh, Bitcoin ATM recently and I got out of the business because uh, we went into the US and we said, hey, we're just going to, here's a new currency. It's great. Uh, it's exciting. If people are interested in it, we're going to have a Bitcoin ATM. And uh, I hired some lawyers and they said, oh, well, you're going to be under four different U.S. regulators. Uh, banking, money, securities, even um, uh, communications because we're using the internet. Uh, so uh, the total amount of regulation would have meant that we'd have to spend a minimum of $25 million just to get insurance bonds to be a money transmitter. 
And that's how these regulations work. It's actually part of fascism. So the, the companies work with the government who have the guns, and they, the big companies say, hey, most of the regulations are actually, the, the big companies want it. Walmart wants more regulation because it keeps the competition out. Uh, it's just, a, it's basically fascism. So what do you think about um, some of the gun policy review that's happening in the U.S. right now? Well, I think it's terrible. Uh, I think uh, guns should be banned uh, in, the, uh, in the hands of the government and the police. Uh, but uh, in any other sense, I believe in total freedom. Anarchists believe that you can do whatever you would like as long as you don't hurt anyone else. Uh, so if you want a gun, that's fine. If you shoot someone with a gun, that's a different story. Uh, but uh, definitely, uh, it's really terrible what they're doing in the U.S. Uh, uh, the real last chance, and this is what the whole uh, Second Amendment in the U.S. was all about, was uh, giving you your own way to protect yourself in case your government ever becomes totally tyrannical, which the U.S. government currently is. Uh, you look at what happened in Boston. That was just unbelievable. You had a 19-year-old boy running around uh, with a pressure cooker, and everyone hid in their houses, and SWAT teams went around and kicked in everyone's doors. In, in a place where everyone has their own self-defense, that wouldn't be an issue and you wouldn't need government but because they've had all their guns taken away, they have no way to protect themselves. Uh, it really turns into a horrible situation. And I'll give you another example. I live in Mexico and it's very cheap to have a, your own personal bodyguard. Uh, it costs about $15 a day. So I have my own private police always with me and uh, he's definitely not giving me a hard time if I drive too fast or, or uh, telling me like I can't smoke here or there or anything like that. And uh, Obviously, if I ever have a problem, and I never have a problem in Mexico, it's, it's much safer than er anyone thinks. Uh, but if I ever did, he's two feet behind me. That's a lot different than calling 911 and hoping a half hour later some guy shows up to protect you, which is a crazy, crazy idea. How does your anarchist philosophy um, underpin the way that you look at playing the markets? Well, I'm a... Uh, capitalist as well. Uh, capitalism, that word's also been uh, really misused over, over the years. Um, people think what's in the U.S. today is capitalism. That's not capitalism. Capitalism does not have a central bank. Uh, capitalism does not have taxes. It doesn't have regulations. Capitalism just means voluntary free transactions. And uh, I'm a, definitely a capitalist. I believe I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, you can even call me an, an anarcho-capitalist. Uh, I'm a huge fan of it. I think everything we have today, look, all this beautiful stuff came from private enterprise. This did not come from the government. In fact, we'd have way better stuff if there was no government. So uh, I think it's, it's really important that uh, free enterprise can, can, uh, can happen. And, and what we have in the U.S. or Canada or any Western country today is nothing even close to capitalism. I call it corporatism. Uh, it's, it's definitely fascism. Uh, the, the meaning of fascism is when the, the large corporations m merge with the government. Uh, you say that to people today in the U.S., they're like, that's crazy, we're not fascists. Go look at the Lincoln Memorial. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, who was a massive fascist, uh, he has his two hands on the Lincoln Memorial on fascies, which is actually the, um, the, where the meaning of the word fascism came from. It's a bundle of sticks that have a uh, rope tied around them. and it, it means that they're strong and they, they're going to use force to keep everything together. Wow. Where do you think this resource market is going? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Uh, well, I think there's so many things happening. I think with the precious metals, with the bullion, uh, that's completely different than what's going on with the miners. Uh, I have no doubts that gold and silver are going to do very well in the coming years. I think the, current, the fiat currencies are going to collapse. Uh, for that reason, I don't even really watch U.S. Uh, gold prices in U.S. dollars. I usually hear it from other people. They'll say, yeah, I heard gold's down $50 today, and I'll be like, oh, I, I don't care. I have, a, I have gold uh, because I know that gold's going to be worth something, whereas Ben Bernanke is counterfeiting money at unbelievable amounts right now, just destroying the U.S. dollar. So uh, people should really realize that they should be getting into hard assets. Anything Ben Bernanke can't counterfeit is a good investment. And uh, we're here at the Resource Show. And I really think if, if people aren't in, invested in some of these uh, mining companies, especially gold and silver miners, uh, the time has never been better. Uh, this is, uh, they've been really beaten down over the last few years, uh, and it's an amazing time to get in. Uh, it's very volatile, it's speculative, but uh, I think there can be massive gains over the next few years. I'm going to say a name, and I want you to give me a brief take on each one. Ben Bernanke. Uh, criminal, counterfeiter, uh, manipulator. He's a price fixer. He fixes the price of interest rates. Um, everything that they say bad things, that's what he does. Uh, he counterfeits money. 
that's all he does. He prints up money, just hits a button on a computer, and he actually thinks that. Sorry, you asked for a short question. Maybe I should keep these a uh, short, short answer. Maybe I should keep them shorter. Okay. <laughs> How about President Obama? Uh, sociopath, uh, criminal, a murderer, um, a thief, uh, disingenuous. Uh, that's enough. Drone bomber. Passionate. <laughs> Ayn Rand. Uh, Ayn Rand, that's an interesting one. I just started a, uh, a, a community in Chile called Galtz Galtz Chile after her book Atlas Shrugged, where all of the uh, world became so socialist, just like today, socialist, fascist, uh, statist, that all the producers went to one place. So I'm actually uh, starting a community in her, in uh, her tribute to her. Um, she's an objectivist, that's a different thing than anarchy, and, uh, but uh, she, she really moved a lot of uh, development of thought on how the world should be, uh, especially her, the way that she looked at um, uh, greed. She said greed is good. Uh, people, when they create wealth, that's a good thing, and we should want those people who are creating wealth to create as much of it as they possibly can. So what's the difference, just a quick sideline, what's the difference between objectivism and being an anarchist? You know, I... I they I'm, sound very similar. There's, there's a lot of similar tones. Um, I'm really not sure. I've never looked into objectivism a lot. It sounds a little like a religion, though. <laughs> a lot of people... It sounds like capitalism. I mean, it's pure capitalism. You know, I'm, I can't really comment on it. I haven't looked into it enough. But I do know that a lot of the people who really believe in objectivism are almost like they treat Ayn Rand a little bit like Jesus. And I find that a little strange, but... I see. <laughs> How about Doug Casey? Oh, Doug Casey. One of the best people on earth, a uh, mentor of mine, uh, he was the person who turned me into an anarchist. And he actually didn't turn me into one, I was already one, but I didn't know there was a word for it. And so I had dinner with him, he's an amazing person, and he asked me a number of questions. At the end of it he said, you know what you are, don't you? And I said, what? And he said, you're a libertarian. And I said, what's that? I've never heard that word before. And then we would talk a little bit longer and he goes, well, you're an anarchist. I said, those people who throw bombs? I didn't even understand. So uh, he, he put me down this path I'm on right now. Where's the global economy going from here? Global economy, that's an interesting question. I think the Western economy, Europe, US, Canada, disaster. And it's going to be much, much, much worse. People won't even believe how bad it's going to get. Asia, I have some hope for. Uh, not necessarily China as much. Uh, China's been doing a lot of the things the US has been doing, printing a lot of money, a lot of regulations, it's all fascist. Uh, so, but they do have a lot of potential. Uh, I prefer, um, I, I think if you're going to invest in Asia, Cambodia is very interesting right now, Myanmar. Uh, I specifically, I really like Latin America. Uh, Mexico is booming. Uh, Chile is unbelievably booming. There's very little government involvement in the economy. The Chilean government has uh, almost no debt, no deficits, uh, lower taxes, very, uh, not much regulation. And because of that, their economy is booming. What's next for you, Jeff? You have some ventures and hotels, um, internationalizing your assets. Yeah, I do so many things and I just do it every day. Really my passion is about freedom and about uh, pros prosperity. And I really see that uh, people don't understand that true capitalism is what brings prosperity. And so I just try to go around as much as possible and talk to people like yourself and many other people, get the word out there, tell them the truth because what they're seeing on their TV every day isn't the truth. And uh, many of the things we talk about, I have a, a newsletter, Dollar Vigilante, dollarvigilante.com. Uh, we write about all these kind of issues, how to expatriate, how to internationalize your assets. Uh, we uh, help people get foreign passports who want to expatriate. I, I used to live in Canada, I don't live here anymore. Uh, so that's tdvpassports.com. And we just started this new community in Chile called Galtz Galtz Chile, uh, just galtzgaltzchile.com. And we're attracting people to come down there and create a new, uh, beautiful new place in a uh, less oppressive environment. Why didn't you um, move into Doug Casey's um, community that he's created? I actually bought. The very first time I okay. went there, I bought a place there. I still have a place there. Uh, but I was hearing that some people had different things they wanted. Uh, they found, and nothing against Doug Casey's place is awesome. Uh, but uh, there were some things that some people didn't like about it. And uh, I just listened to them. And they said, it's a little far away than I would like. Uh, they prefer it wasn't in Argentina with the current Argentinian government. Uh, things like that. So I just listened to them and I, I just found the place that they were looking for and so I'm just building my own and, and Doug's a fan of our location. I'm a fan of his location. We're definitely not competition or anything like that. I think they're both great places. Uh, some people will like one over the other I and vice versa. Definitely. And we day. can use a lot more options like that. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Jeff. It was a pleasure having you and we look forward to having you back again soon. Great. Thank you.